So I actually tried to film this earlier today, um, but, <laughs> oh man, I had the camera upside down, so it, it like was not watchable. So I'm going to go ahead and refilm it. Maybe, possibly, the puppy will let me get through this without, you know, making himself known. At any rate, mylar bags and storing the mylar bags and oxygen absorbers. That's what we're discussing right now. So, I have two Mylar bags. I have a five gallon right here. Then I have a one gallon. These are oxygen absorbers. Mylar bags are measured in mils. Um, I tried to look up to see exactly what it stood for. I knew it was a measurement. Um, but I couldn't find like one definition that everybody seemed to agree with. So, we're just gonna call it a unit of measure. So there's like three, five, seven, probably more mils of um, Mylar bags. But those are the ones I see a lot, um, you know, online. Five and above is preferred, but they obviously are more expensive. Since I store my stuff in um, food grade buckets, I went ahead this time and bought, um, I think this is the three mil. It's, it's pretty thin. But I keep mine in airtight five, five five gallon food grade buckets boy that was a tongue twister so i'm not quite as concerned about that they're getting to be extremely expensive now um a lot of people are apparently getting into prepping so i just went ahead and bought what i could get for a decent price now oxygen absorbers um these are put in the bags or the bucket itself for whatever you're going to try to preserve to keep to take the air out um, it kind of does it after the fact so you seal the bag and then as time goes on oxygen oxygen absorber absorbs the oxygen these are measured in cc's which stands for cubic centimeters so like for instance this one is 300 cc's so it will remove 300 cubic centimeters of oxygen from the bag that it's in now, when it comes to how many oxygen absorbers or, you know, the total number of cc's per bag, it kind of depends on what you are putting into it. So, if you have something that's really dense, like grains, um, those are going to need just a, a hair less um, oxygen absorbers than, say, uh, rice or beans or pasta. Those need just a touch more. And obviously, that's because there's more oxygen around those items they remove. So, for a one gallon Mylar bag, the recommended is 400 cc's. Well, I have 300. <laughs> so, I'm going to have to use two per bag unless I'm putting a grain in here, in which case I could get away with the 300. But Obviously, I was not paying that close of attention when I bought these. Otherwise, I probably would have considered that. Not a big deal. Two in one bag is fine. I mean, honestly, I could probably get away with one if I don't fill the bag all the way up. Or if I even cut it down a bit. Now, oxygen absorbers are not the same as desiccant packs. Also known as silica gel packs or those little things. I have one right here. These little things that you get in like, you know, a new pair of shoes or your vitamins or whatever. These are filled with silica gel and they are to remove moisture. Oxygen absorbers are, have a powdered, I think it's um, iron oxide to remove oxygen. So they have their, per both have their purposes and their places in food preservation, but they do totally different things. Well, I mean, I guess there's some overlap. Like these, I, I, you can save these when you get them in your products or whatever. You can put them in like a, a Ziploc bag or a mason jar. And then when you get enough of them, um, you can put them in the oven. The problem with this is that most ovens that people have in their home will not get low enough. If you have a dehydrator, that would be preferred. Because you would want to put it in the oven at 120 degrees for a half an hour, for 30 minutes. You can also make these. There's a cat litter, cat litter that's made of silica gel balls. 
and that's what's in here. So you can buy that, you know, huge thing of cat litter for a few bucks, and then you can buy, like, the empty tea bags or even use coffee filters. Put, like, a teaspoon of um, the silica gel into that, staple it up, and then there you go. You have your own silica gel. I use these for... The stuff that I put in mason jars, but not my dehydrated food. I use it for, like, the rice or the beans or the couscous or something like that that I vacuum seal in a mason jar. If I have one, I'll stick it in there. But since I'm vacuum sealing it, you know, sometimes I don't either. If I have one, then I'll put it in. If not, I'm not going to worry about it. But that's the difference between oxygen absorbers and silica, also known as desiccant packs. So now, this five-gallon one has a, um, zip, a Ziploc seal, and then this one does not. I don't find that this is any more beneficial than this. Um, all you need to seal a Mylar bag is either a clothing iron, or if you have one, a straightener, hair straightener, flat iron. Those actually work the best, and because my daughter has unruly hair, um, we have straighteners, so that is what I use. I will show you that later in the video when we seal some of these up. Um, but I, I don't find that the Ziploc is any more of a benefit to this when it's being stored. Now, obviously, once you open it, it'll keep, you know, storing for a little longer because you can seal it up without having to, you know, reseal the bag. I find five gallons to be far too big for me. We have, at any given time, four people in the house. I don't really want something open, exposed to air that's this large of a, of a product. I like the one gallons I can put, and this would last, you know, a couple days or whatever it is. Um, these are a little easier to manage for me, and they would be a little easier to then put into a mason jar or another container while I'm using them. So I prefer the one gallon. But that's totally dependent on what you're buying, how much you're buying at the time, what you want to store. Um, I, prefer, I, I recommend highly that you store your Mylar bags after they're sealed in food grade buckets. I suppose even at that point, they don't even have to be food grade if your food is not touching the inside of the... Um, the inside of the bucket, but I just buy food grade buckets. Um, you can get them at Home Depot, you can get them at Tractor Supply, you can get them a lot of places. And um, I use them to put my Mylar bags in. It's really nice. Now you're not going to get, I guess, as many bags in there if you use a smaller bag. Um, it's, you're kind of going to waste some room with the way these end up sucking up after they're sitting for a while. And I'll show you one of those. I'll show you a, one that has the oxygen taken out of it. And then I'll also show you one that looks like it has air in it, but but it's not. People, there are some people, you know, who use these and then they notice some air, air in the bag and get really mad that the oxygen absorber didn't work. And no, it did work, assuming you use the right, you know, CC oxygen absorber for what you're putting in your bag but it won't remove your nitrogen that's in our air so you might notice that some bags don't seem to have sucked up the air like others and there's nothing to worry about if you use the right amount for what you store and the size of your bag you're fine you don't have to worry about it um so i just wanted to say that because i see that as a complaint a lot on like amazon reviews for these so, I just wanted to throw that out there. But yeah, so what we're going to do is put stuff in here. Then I'm going to put the oxygen absorbers, and then I'm going to seal the bag, and then I'll put it in a bucket. So we're going to do all of that fun stuff. Um, there are certain things you don't want to put in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers, such as sugar. Both regular and brown sugar. It will make it a brick. Like a brick. It will be hard as a rock. That's not, in my opinion, the way you want to store your sugar. I don't know. Some people might like that, I guess. But I do not. Um, so I can, I, 
I've put it in both mason jars I've vacuum sealed and I've just put it in a, a bag that I seal without the oxygen absorber, maybe a desiccant pack, um, not, not a real big one or not a lot, just to get some of that excess moisture that may be there, but that seems to work for me. I don't know. Um, I suppose you could even just put it, if you have enough of it, put it straight in a bucket and then seal it with the lid. Um, that might work too. Right now, I haven't put my current load of sugar in anything. They are in the original containers within my buckets. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do because I have quite a bit of it. And I don't want to waste a lot of mason jars right now because they're super hard to find. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how I want to store it for long term. But also, my storage is also like I'm rotating through it. I don't put stuff in a bucket and then just never think about it again. Now, some of it probably will be in there long enough for it to be considered that. But I use, like, if I need sugar and I ran out upstairs in my, my working, you know, everyday pantry, I'm going to run downstairs and grab my sugar in my long-term pantry. So, and then when I buy more sugar, I'll replace, I'll take out one of these bags and, and put it in line to be used in the kitchen. And then use one of the ones I bought to go into storage. So, there, at any given time, I have a bunch of food but I'm rotating through it constantly um, that way stuff stays as fresh as possible but you can get many 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 years if you um, do this right keep them away from like pests that could chew through these bags easily especially like this three mil one um, if you keep them in food grade buckets or in some sort of sealed container like even those big Tupperware um, Containers you can buy at Walmart. That would be great for these too. I think the buckets are handy and they're cheap. So that's what I use um, So but there's you know, there's a lot of options there. So I know this is way longer than I wanted it to be um, But I thought I'd just give a little background information and we're gonna go downstairs and we are gonna put some food in these bags Or I might bring it upstairs. I haven't quite figured out. But at any rate, that is our next step. Okay, here we have a couple um, items already in the Mylar bag. Here is some oatmeal, and as you can see, the oxygen absorber in here really sucked out all the air. It's, it's you know, very firm. If there's not, like, you can't really move anything around in there. So this is one that worked really well. And here is one where you can see some air in there. This is what I was talking about before, where this is not an example of it not working. This is an example of there still being some nitrogen in there. Um, nothing to worry about. The food is perfectly fine. Um, but, you know, it's just, you can see that there's, there's just some air. But I used the right amount of oxygen absorbers, and there's nothing wrong with it. Here is my bucket. This is a food-grade bucket. And it comes with, well, I had to buy them separately, but, you know, I bought the lid. I really prefer the tractor supply buckets and their lids. Um, these seal real, real well. Um, it's kind of hard to take off. You can buy a lid remover tool, but I don't really feel like that's necessary. So I just work at getting it off. Um, today, we are going to, I have some stuff that needs to be put in my alarm. I got some flour, egg noodles, and then, and then this other container. As you can see on this bucket, I wrote grains on it. So there is some stuff in here that's already put away. Like here, this is a real good example of the oxygen absorber taking out pretty much all the oxygen. I have noticed when you kind of pack things in the bag, it kind of helps make it really take all the oxygen out real well. So today, we're going to put this popcorn, this quinoa, noodles, and then the stuff I bought from Amazon that needs to go into Mylar bags, like the buttermilk and a couple other things. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to do it with your 
mylar bags and your oxygen absorbers. But what we're also going to do, and I haven't figured out how I'm going to do this. I'm probably going to have to put the tripod on the floor. But I did buy a 25-pound bag of flour, and I am going to put that in the 5-gallon bag. Um, even though I already have flour, you know, some of which I'm going to have to put away today, um, you can't have too much. You know, flour makes bread and all sorts of other things. So it was $5 at Walmart to buy a 25-pound bag of flour, so that's what I did. Um, so anyway, that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to put some of this stuff in Mylar bags. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out these oxygen absorbers from, um, I'm going to cut open this bag and I have my ball jar right here and I'm going to go ahead and throw them in as quick as possible. This is a piece of paper that has the oxygen indicator on it and you'll see when I open this it'll start turning blue but I'm going to shove all these in here first before I get all my bags and stuff set up that way I feel like I'm less under the gun if it's in a different container um, so let me do that real fast so I don't want these getting exposed too long so we're just going to shove them in here as fast as I can and then I'll show you the eye is going to start turning colors very soon. So we're just going to do this so I don't feel quite as stressed out. I don't know why this, this bag makes me feel more stressed out than a mason jar, but that's just how I feel about it. So we're going to put them all in there first. I'm still trying to decide how I want to do like these containers like this. Here's a thing of milk powder. I think what I'm going to do is, since I do have these five gallon bags that I don't like using because they're so large, I might put all of my containers that look like this and put them in the five gallon bucket. That way um, I can get use of the, the five gallon bag and I, can, I don't have to take these out of the original container and also they'll still be um, kept protected because they'll be in a bag. See, and you can look now the oxygen indicator is blue slash purple and I usually slide this on the side of the jar where I can see it. Um, so I'm going to put the lid on since I'm done doing that. It'll seal itself up and this way I don't feel so um, under pressure <laughs> I guess. I feel like it's less absorption of oxygen when I open up just from this little hole than just having them all in this bag. So that is the first thing we're going to do. The second thing is here I have my daughter's flat iron and I'm, it's pretty cool in this house. We have a plug under the table. So I have it plugged in and I'm going to turn it on, but I'm going to turn it down to 350 Actually, I might do 330 because these Mylar bags are um, a lot thinner, the ones I'll be using today. So it's warming up. And while I'm doing that, get these scissors, get some of these smaller items. I have some grits here that I have to go in a bag. This will go in a bag. The tapioca powder, I'm going to put just like this in a, in a Mylar bag. I'm not going to open it. <clears throat> These Idaho and mashed potatoes are going to go in one bag. By, you know, all four of them will go in one bag. The butter powder will go in a bag just like this. And then these three containers will go into a... I you can't see that. These three containers will go into a five-gallon bag. That's it for here for now. Okay. So I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. Oops. See? Stuff flying everywhere. I guess I could have put the buckets on the floor, but then Gunner would start barking at it thinking it was an invader. I 
if they don't fit perfectly, I'll fold my item or whatever I got to do to get it in there. But this one's going to fit good. And then I kind of just stack them, you know, standing up. Like the noodles, I'm going to keep in their own bag as well. I mean, there's, it's a nice bag that fits perfectly in here. There's no reason to take it out. But I guess I could. I don't know. I'll think about that as I'm putting some of these other things away. For the potatoes, since they're different flavors, I want them to go to be kept in their original bag. And you can either write on these bags before you get the stuff in, after. Sometimes I wait until after if I'm breaking up. Like the grits may have to go into more than one bag. Um, so a lot of times I wait. But I am going to go grab my Sharpie real quick. So on the mashed potatoes, I'm just going to put um, various mashed potatoes. I don't care about being that specific. And then it's um, August of 20. Egg noodles. And I did decide I'm going to leave it in the bag that we have the directions and everything in there. And then this is buttermilk powder. And I am going to put that this is two pounds. Since I know, and then we'll put August. I don't care about being too neat. So now I'm going to take this five gallon bag I have here. And on this one, I'm going to have to write the three different containers I'm putting in there. You know what? I take that back. I'm not going to do that right this second because <laughs> I still haven't decided if it's how I want to do those. Disregard my craziness. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and get started on these three bags. I mean, this is enough to show you the process. Um, for the egg noodles, the only reason why I'm going to keep it in the bag is because it has the directions, it has the weight, and it has a recipe. I mean, it just feels like it, it, it was packaged that way. It fits perfectly in this Mylar bag. I'm just going to keep it that way. And it's also another layer of protection. The same with the buttermilk powder. It's already sealed in its original package. This just gives it a second layer of protection. So now, since these are gallon, um, gallon bags, um, I'm going to put two in each of these. And the reason why is because there's a lot of like space in the bag and they're not totally filled up and normally it would take about 400 cc's but these are three so I'm gonna go ahead and just put two in each bag again quickly seal it back up you can see how it's like it's kind of weird Okay, now I'm going to take the top of my bag and kind of fold it together. I'm going to take my flat iron. Hopefully you can see this real well. Maybe I'll fold it like this. And then I'm just going to kind of clamp it closed. I don't want to leave it there too long so it'll burn it. I don't want to burn it. And I kind of usually go over just a little bit just to make sure there's not a crack. I've had it happen before where... I thought everything was sealed, but there was like one little area that didn't seal, and it was for coffee, so I could smell <laughs> the coffee when I opened up the bucket, so I know, eh, something's wrong here. Um, so I just make sure. That's why I keep it on a lower temperature. I put it on 330 this time, um, because it's it's a little, they're thinner than the 5 mil bags, so I usually do those at 350, and I thought it just kind of worked well, and it did. So, 
Got the egg noodles in there. Now we got the buttermilk powder. So I'm gonna do the same thing. We have our oxygen absorbers in there. So I'm just going to seal the bag. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you get all parts as you go all the way down. And then like I said, I go gently over every area to make sure that there's not a space that was missed. And then it's sealed, nice. We'll do the mashed potatoes. Just seal the bag. Go over it. Just not keeping it there real long, just like for a second in order to seal it. And you can see it's perfectly sealed. And I made sure to do it above because there's a tear notch right here on the back so I did make sure I sealed it above that so that it could be easily torn open or you know you could use a knife or whatever but that just makes it a little cleaner so yeah so that, that's how you seal stuff in mylar bags it's truly very very simple um, I have a lot more stuff and I can show you it like you know pulling it out of here and putting it into a bag because this I probably will take out of this because I don't like this packaging um, I feel like this could bust open and make a mess. So I will end up cutting out the directions from the bag after I get it into the Mylar bag. And then I will paste or tape this onto the back of the bag or even just toss it in there with the, with the stuff. So that is pretty much all I'm going to do. I will show you what I'm going to do with the 25 pounds of flour because I feel like that's going to be a little more interesting to see. Um, even though I'm going to have to put the tripod on the floor. Um, but that's just pretty much what's going to happen. I'm just going to keep putting these items in Mylar bags with their oxygen absorber. And these, again, I still haven't quite figured out if I want to put these in one bag together. Or maybe one Mylar bag each. I don't know. I'm still undecided. I guess I better figure that out soon. Hey. Okay, well, we'll be back when I figure... Alright, I'm sorry about the puppy, but I really just need to get this done. So we're going to go ahead and put the all-purpose flour in this 5-gallon um, Mylar bag and that's currently in the 5-gallon bucket. I'm going to stick the oxygen absorbers in there, seal it up, and then I will be done with the Mylar video. So let's try to get this out of here real quick. So, I only cut the one corner because I don't want to make a mess and I kind of set the bag in such a way that I can kind of put the bag as much as I can in there but what I'm going to do is stop and kind of beat it down like that a little bit Almost done. So, <clears throat> when you're using a five gallon bucket or a five gallon bag, you need 2,000 cc's of oxygen absorption. So, since mine are in 300, I'm going to need seven. I believe that's right, right? Yeah, that'll be 2,100, which I want to go over since I don't have um, exactly the. 2,000. Here, the rest of this. I'll put this far, okay. So I got my seven oxygen absorbers and I'm just gonna kind of place them in the flower. And then I'm gonna seal the bag. I'll get out as much air as I can. 
And I want the top to be straight because I'm going to need to use my flat iron to seal it. So I'm going to make sure first that this Ziploc is sealed. I'm not going to worry too, too much about the um, air in the bag. I'm just trying to get it closed as quickly as possible. But these are not easy zip seals to get. Okay. I think that was good. So now I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. And I've been having my flat iron warm up. And I'm just going to seal the top just like this. Sure it's all sealed. Okay. It's a little bit warm, but it actually like, cools off super quickly. So now I put my lid on. And what I do to get these lids to seal like really well is I stick my knuckle and this way I can kind of push out excess air in the bucket. It seals. And there you go. There's the bucket. Thought I had a Sharpie somewhere, but at any rate, that's how I seal my flour, my 25 pounds of flour in this nice bucket. We'll go over and I'll show you a couple of my goodies over there. I found my Sharpie. It was over here. So here, I don't know if you can really see there's a few of our buckets. You can see I've labeled them. The bags inside them are labeled with um, the date because I keep, like when I rotate the stuff out, I keep putting the same type of item in that bat in the or in that bucket. So, at any rate, I hope you enjoyed learning about mylar and food storage and all that good stuff. So. I'm telling you people, I think it's a good time to make sure you have your stuff together and you're ready. Because I think we're in for some rough times. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you.